Hey, YouTube, we are back again this week for another video portion of the Daily Dose Sports Podcast. Hopefully, you are enjoying these every single week, and I know you're probably sick of hearing it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it again. I hope everyone out there is doing well. I hope you are all staying healthy. Aren't you kind of getting sick of hearing that? I know that I am. Anyways, this week on the Daily Dose YouTube video, we actually have some like real sports news for you this week. Some things happening in the NFL and the NBA that we need to discuss, so let's jump into that right now. Let's get started with some real, actual sports news this week. And it actually takes place in the NFL where former NFL MVP Cam Newton has reached an agreement on a one-year incentive-laden deal with the New England Patriots. And I know you've already heard the news. And I know a lot of people are declaring the Patriots now to be like back to Super Bowl contention because they have Cam Newton on the roster. Patriot fans are all fired up. I know he might not be touchdown Tommy, but Cam Newton's a former MVP. Yeah, except for the fact that you all hated Cam Newton before he joined the roster. So I'm not sure if Boston fan can really be trusted here. But I do wonder this. Is Cam Newton even healthy? I mean, he has had the bad shoulder, really bad shoulder. He's had the bad foot. They say that he doesn't eat any meat, he doesn't get any protein, and that he is struggling and struggling and struggling to heal and get past those injuries. So let's see if he's actually able to play before we pencil the Patriots into the Super Bowl. Remember this, over the last two seasons, Cam Newton is 6-10 and 10 as a starter. He missed a lot of time being injured, so let's wait and see. The good news, though, is that the city of Boston bring in like an African-American quarterback. I mean, the good thing is they don't see color. So you know, those fans up there, they're going to be very, very supportive no matter how he does, right? Now, I will say this. I do actually think this is a great move for the Patriots. I mean, it's really low risk. It's a low salary. It's all incentives. But let's not forget this. We have all been saying how few of offensive weapons that Tom Brady has had over the past few years. Now, suddenly people are acting like, oh, think of him in that offense. Oh, you mean that offense that didn't have all that much talent on it? I'm not so sure. But there are two other things I want to keep an eye on with this whole situation. The Patriots were already slated to be on national TV like a number of times, even though Brady was going to be gone. So here is something I really want to watch this upcoming season with the New England Patriots and Cam Newton. There are a couple things that I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see Bill Belichick's face when Cam Newton sails a pass like 20 feet over Julian Edelman's head with the game on the line. Because remember, Belichick has been used to Brady just delivering in the clutch with the game on the line, making the cool collected play. That's not exactly how Cam Newton plays. But you know what? As great as that will be, just watching Belichick's face on the sideline, Way more than that, the thing I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see Bill Belichick's face in the post-game interview as he's sitting at the podium and Cam comes and joins him at the podium after, again, he has thrown that pass over a wide-open receiver into the stands. And then Cam shows up at the press conference wearing culottes like a crop top and a bonnet. That's what I can't wait for because I'm telling you right now, Bill Belichick's face is going to turn inside out when that happens. He is not going to even understand how to deal with that whole situation. Some other news about the Patriots. The Patriots were also penalized for their television crews filming the field and sideline during that December 8th game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. Remember, the Patriots weren't even involved in that game. They still had the video running, though. So the NFL docked them. 1.1 million bucks and a third round draft pick next year. In addition, the Patriots television production crews will not be allowed to shoot any games during the upcoming season and senior club officials will undergo required training on league operations and game policies. The NFL really laying down the law here with the Patriots. So you have a million bucks and a mid-round draft pick. Yeah, you know, that really hurt them the last time, didn't it? And I'm sure it's really going to hurt them again this time. And I'm sure it's going to hurt them again the next time it happens, too. Because, I mean, based on Bill Belichick's history, it will happen again. It keeps happening 
We can pretend like it won't, but we all know that it will. It was also announced last week that the NFL will cancel the Hall of Fame preseason game that was scheduled for August 8th between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys. And that announcement actually got a lot of people kind of starting to panic about the season even taking place at all this year. Do you know what I thought when I heard the NFL was canceling that Hall of Fame preseason game? Good. Dump the rest of the preseason too. Think back to like six months ago. And I know the world has changed since then. But if someone had told us like back in December, hey, next year, the NFL is going to dump the entire preseason. Oh, we would have been thrilled. This has been a long time coming. Stop holding the ticket holders hostage and making them buy these pathetic exhibitions. I know a lot of people kind of freaked out about this. I'm not complaining. Cancel the rest of the preseason and then you're finally getting somewhere. The NFL did also announce that they are going to be putting tarps on the first six to eight rows of seats around their stadiums and that teams will be allowed to post advertising on those tarps to kind of offset the loss of money. I mean, sounds kind of strange, but it is actually kind of a smart move. You distance the fans from the players. You pull in some money by doing that to make up, you know, for those lost tickets that you're not going to get. But there are a couple other things this means. For one, I mean, Charger Stadium is going to look a little fuller with these tarps, right? And for two, it's not all good. Like there's going to be a downside because that extra gap means that Raider fans are going to have to throw their batteries a little bit further. And that can be a struggle when you're wearing that C-3PO costume. What I'm saying is the accuracy by Raider fans throwing those C batteries is going to go down. You're going to have to work a little bit harder, Raider fan, because now you're going to have that gap between the players. I understand the gap separates the fans from the players, maybe keeps everyone a little bit safer. That's a good thing. Raider fan, you're going to have to loosen up that arm a little bit if you're going to chuck that battery 10 rows over in an Ewok outfit is what I'm saying. Let's move over to the NBA, where the NBA released their schedule for games in Orlando late last week. Remember, that season will be resuming on Thursday, July 30th. And on the opening night, we're going to have Zion Williamson and the New Orleans Pelicans tipping off against the Utah Jazz and Rudy Gobert. That's kind of interesting because you might remember it was Rudy Gobert whose positive test for the virus actually helped lead to the suspension of the season back in early March. Quick note on opening night. Let Rudy Gobert cough just one time and let's see what happens. Because he walks out for the opening tip and just does one of these <coughs> and they're going to shut that entire league down indefinitely. Rudy Gobert, we're all kind of depending on you. Hit the inhaler, whatever you need to do. Don't so much as clear your throat when you walk out onto that floor. After that game, we're going to get another good one as LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Los Angeles Lakers will resume their title chase by facing a big rival. They'll be going against Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and the Los Angeles Clippers in a clash between the two top teams in the Western Conference. Remember, the Lakers lead the Clippers by five and a half games. Going to be really, really interesting just to watch that opening night and just kind of see how this all plays out. Remember, these teams are going to play eight, kind of finish out the regular season games, and then they're going to jump into the playoffs. They're going to be down in Orlando in that little bubble, hopefully keeping everyone safe and healthy. We'll see how that goes. One final story coming out of the NBA last week. It was also announced that Los Angeles Lakers guard Avery Bradley has opted out of playing for the remainder of the season. Bradley actually started 44 games for the Lakers this season, and he told team management of his decision to stay home. And they say that the major reason for his decision is he wants to remain with his family. He's worried about the health of his oldest child. His six-year-old son, Liam, has some respiratory issues. He doesn't want to leave. Bradley and his wife, Ashley, have three children. He says he's not going to play. He's going to stay home with his family. Hey, that's his right to do that. If you're worried about your family, like any job, I mean, the NBA is no different. Like any job, you stay home, you take care of your family. You're not going to get paid. You're not going to get a check, but you stay home and you take care of your family. So in turn, with Avery Bradley not coming back, the Lakers are now able to sign a replacement player for Bradley. 
And on Monday, it was announced that they would be signing free agent guard J.R. Smith, who, of course, played with LeBron in Cleveland. J.R. Smith going down to Orlando to join the Lakers. Let me say this. And when I say it, you might think I'm joking. I'm not joking. J.R. Smith is that guy. I don't know how to explain it. I can't really put my finger on it. But J.R. Smith is that guy. I'm telling you right now. If there is anyone in the entire league that is going to let the virus into that supposed NBA bubble that is supposed to be safe, it is going to be J.R. Smith. Don't say you didn't know. Don't say we didn't see this coming. It will happen. He's that guy. It's science. Okay, YouTube, make sure that you go over and you check out the rest of the podcast. I'll leave a link for it down here in the comments on YouTube. Hey, this week on the show, we're actually doing something for Independence Day this Saturday. We're going to be building a few sports Mount Rushmores. We have some memorials to build for the greatest in Major League Baseball, boxing, college basketball, the NBA, college football, and the NFL. We're going to be putting the best of the best up on our own Daily Dose Mount Rushmores, so make sure that you go out and you check out the full podcast. Like I said, I will leave a link for it here in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe to The Daily Dose on YouTube. We'll keep putting up these videos. Hope you all are doing well. Stay positive. We're going to get back to real sports very, very soon. I will see you all next week.